Hey everybody, it's Tyler from Tapper coming at you. Today we are doing a couple of steak knives for you. So a while back my wife had told me that she was kind of tired of the steak knives we have. Just a little cheap set like you get at Target or something like that. So I thought I'd make her a set of four nice ones for Valentine's Day. Just like with all my projects that seem to get done a little bit after Valentine's Day, but she's used to that by now. When I first got these knives, I held them in my hand, and they had this little kind of tip coming off of the back of them that didn't feel very comfortable when I held it, so I wanted to take it over to the belt sander and reprofile the handle of these knives a little bit before I even started working on the scales for them. So one of the big reasons why I didn't have these in, done in time for Valentine's Day was I made a set of really intricate handles for them and I ended up taking them over to the table saw and I exploded the piece of wood after the first or second pass through and there just wasn't enough material to get enough scales out of it to make it work. So the second time I decided to use a couple different woods I used. It's the leopard wood that you see here in this big block. And I put some red heart on there, some coal wood, and some walnut. So what I'm going to end up doing is laminating all those different types of wood together. They were all the same thickness except for this uh, leopard wood. So what I'm doing here is connecting it to my crosscut sled and just cutting a little bit of a slit off of it so it's the same thickness as the other ones. So what I'm doing right now is I'm gluing the red heart and the leopard wood together. I'm going to make them so they're the same length as the other pieces of wood that I have. Uh, so that way I can cut them down to strips and they will go together easier. Now I wanted to make sure all of the strips were of about the same thickness. So what I'm going to do here, I got my table saw sled and I put a little stop block up there. That way I can just butt the wood up against it and make sure that all these strips are going to be relatively the same width when they go together. So with that piece of leopard heart and red wood, I really wanted to make sure that I could get all the slits out of it but not get my fingers too close to the blade. So I just got a spare piece of plywood here, a little bit of hot glue to put them together. What that's going to do is basically give me a little bit of a handle. So you can see how it's working there. I didn't let the glue dry long enough, so I had a bunch of these pieces fall apart a little bit. Um, I know I should have waited longer, but again, I was in a hurry. I wanted to get the glue up done that night, so I didn't really have time to wait. But I'll be able to just kind of super glue them together off camera. With all the strips cut out, now it's time to get some glue on them and start laminating them all together. You can see the pieces of leopard wood and red heart that I had to super glue back together here. It's not going to be the strongest bond, but after they're laminated like this, it's really not going to matter. There's going to be enough strength between the, all the glue on the sides and the wood next to it, so they aren't going to split apart. Now with all the glue on them, I'm going to turn them up on their edge, get them all stacked together, and then we'll get them clamped up. getting all the clamps on now. It's pretty interesting how how much these bowed in the middle and how much thicker it was in the middle than on the sides even with that stop block set up. Cuts must not have been exactly parallel but it's not really gonna matter in the end. We're gonna chop them up at an angle so you aren't gonna be able to tell the difference in thickness anyway. After we get them all clamped up we just gotta let them dry overnight and then we're ready to do some finishing to this block. So it's the next day here, you can kind of see that bow I was talking about there. Um, taking over the belt sander just to kind of clean up one side of it, take a look, see what we have. So now that I have that one side flat, there's a surface for me to set up against the fence on the table saw. Now with how many knives I have, I have to cut this piece in half before I cut the scales out of it. 
so I'm just running it through a table saw here to get two pieces out of it. So originally in my head I had the idea that I wanted the diagonals to be a lot steeper than they turned out in the final project, but I just didn't quite have the room in the piece I cut out. Should have made it a little bit wider. So now what I'm doing is go over to the scroll saw to do some more fine cuts. I am cutting the pieces in half and cutting them in half again. It's going to give me enough blocks for the sides of all of the handles. I tried to go right down the middle so I could have the scales look about the same after they were on the knife. Have them be mirror images of each other on each side of it. So after I figured out what angles I wanted these to be glued onto the knife at, I cut one of the blocks at that angle, matched it up on top of all the other ones so I could make the stripes a consistent uh, angle in relation to the knife. Then of course I had to go back through and cut them all out. After that I had to go over the belt sander and just kiss the tops of them just enough to get all those saw marks out and make it an even flat surface. Just doing a little bit more shaping of these before I glue them on the handles. I put one of the knives over top of them and trace the outline that way I could get the bulk of the material off. Make them a little bit easier to work with so I can see what I'm doing a little bit better. And just less work to do after they're mounted onto the knife. So this is why it's so important to prep the handles of your knives before you glue them on. Check out the sandpaper and how much uh, grease and grunge and stuff I'm getting off of there. I always go over them with a heavy grit sandpaper, then some paint thinner. Now if you don't do that, you can imagine how much worse all the epoxy is going to stick to that, trying to stick through all that grime and grease. So now that all the handles are all relatively clean, mix up the two part epoxy and I like to do one side of the handles first. So I'm going to go through, get all that done and get those glued on. Now that they're all on, I'm going to clamp them all down with a couple of clamps and let the epoxy cure for a little bit before I go on to the next step. With the one side cured, I can go over to my drill press, sit them on that flat surface, and drill all of my pins through. And then we're off to the other side to repeat. Mix up some more epoxy and glue these sides of the handles on. So off camera I'm going to flip these over, take them back over to the drill press and get those holes going all the way through from the other side that I drilled so we can put our pins in here in a minute. So after these were cured I started looking at how thick the scales were and I decided that instead of going through and spending all the time sanding these down I was just going to take them back over to the scroll saw, take off about half the material and hopefully save myself some tedious sanding time. The other nice thing about that is that instead of turning those other sides into dust, now I have a bunch of these little halves that I can hopefully make something fun out of. I haven't decided what yet. I also went around the perimeter, again, just to save a little bit of time at the belt sander. So off camera, I ended up shaping the knife handles a little bit on the belt sander, just preliminary shaping. Then I mixed up some two-part epoxy. After that, I smeared it all over the pins, put a little bit in the holes on the knife, and just hammered them on through. So before the next step, you really want to let the epoxy cure probably overnight, but then you're left with some pins sticking out of there. I just take them over to the belt sander and grind them off. You've got to be careful not to stay on them too long because they will get super hot because there's not very much metal there. Um, and if they get too hot, you can actually melt that two-part epoxy in there and make it really soft. 
Now I probably should have done this step before I had the handles on, but I didn't. So I'm going to go over to the buffing wheel, basically put a little piece of masking tape over the wood. If you don't do that, you can actually get some of the buffing compound just like stuck into the wood. It'll make it look kind of dirty. Show me how you can sand it. And now it's time to get the sandpaper out. So my assistant and I went from about 180 to around 800 grit working up through the steps. With the wipe on poly that I'm using, you really gotta work up through the grits like that, otherwise you'll see the scratches. It really doesn't fill in fill them in very well. But the upside to it is that you aren't gonna get any drips and it's really easy to apply. So after all that sanding, it's time to get the wipe on finish on here. Now originally I said that I had a different uh, handle scale made for those, and I'm going to put that up here. Uh, you can see those pieces and kind of see how they started shattering apart when I put them through the table saw. So I still like that original design, and I'm going to use it on something just to get enough of the pieces out of there for as many knives as I had here. I had to cut them way too thin. So back to the handles I actually ended up using. I put three coats of this on, and I'm pretty happy with how the finish turned out on. Now if you do something like this, I'm not sure exactly how well these will hold up to going through the dishwasher, so we've just been hand washing them with a little bit of soap and water, and they've held up fine with that. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video. If you have any comments, suggestions, questions, please leave them down in the comments. And if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and hit that button. And I will be back next week with more.